where do you where do you get red light it's it's part of the spectrum as you said it's it's in the sun right i mean you you can get it in the sun so many people want to buy the, the the light therapy boxes but where's the best place to get it yeah so you know i said earlier we've evolved humans have evolved to require certain parts of the spectrum of light um in the same way we re require nutrients from our diet and so when you understand this broader evolutionary context, you take this red light therapy thing out of the context of some weird, wacky, you know, woo woo sort of pseudoscience of like, oh, here's this handheld light and it's red and it does magical things. It has magical powers. And you go, well, actually, it's just like the story of ultraviolet light and vitamin D. And it's just like the story of blue light and circadian rhythm human beings evolved to require certain parts of the spectrum of light that do certain things in our body and help it function properly we, we require them to be healthy so the reason that we evolved that is only because it's present in the sun if it wasn't present in sunlight we we wouldn't have evolved that capacity so it's not just a coincidence that it's there. It's, you know, it's, it's the same, it's the same story with plant phytochemicals. Human beings also evolved a capacity to not only not be damaged by these different chemicals in, uh, in, in, in plants, like whether it's sulforaphane or, um, or curcumin or, uh, quercetin or thousands of other chemicals that are found in plants we not only evolved the capacity to not be damaged by them, we evolved the capacity to benefit from them. So the same is true with light. And basically, yeah, it's the, the primary source historically has of course been sunlight. Um, if you get ample sunlight, you know, on a daily or close to daily basis, we don't know this for sure because it hasn't really been tested, but my best guess is that if you get lots and lots of sunlight on a near daily basis, you probably wouldn't benefit much from red light therapy devices because you're probably already getting most of those benefits in the context of the sun exposure you're getting. There are some exceptions to that treating certain deep tissue areas. Um, yeah, there's definitely arguments you could make still in favor of red light therapy. Um, maybe there's also a case, this hasn't been tested as well, maybe there's a case for greater benefits when you cut out other parts of the light spectrum. Um, and I think there's a very strong case to be made for that in the context of like skin anti-aging, where ultraviolet light tends to induce UV damage, um, DNA damage at the level of the skin when it's too much, our skin tends to be sensitive to that. So maybe if you remove that part of the spectrum, you have more red and near infrared light, you get most of the healing benefits that would be likely superior to what you would get from the sun. So um, there are other cases, high power device that might penetrate much more deeply, for example, through the skull into the brain that we probably don't get from the sun. Um, so scenarios like that, but of course, historically, we've evolved to require this signal, this light nutrient, from exposure to sunlight. And one of the points that I want to emphasize in that context is most people have only a very small part, uh, only a small bit of knowledge of this story of the, the relationship of humans to the sun. We know about the vitamin D story. And um, it, it's been, it, in people's minds, it's been portrayed basically as if vitamin D is the only benefit of sunlight and vitamin D is synonymous with getting sunlight. So if I don't get sunlight, I can just take a, a vitamin D pill and that replaces my sun exposure. And that kind of thinking is extremely misguided in my opinion, because we have already discovered many, many other benefits that we get from sunlight beyond just vitamin D. And I think we are going to continue to discover actually many more in the coming years and decades. I mean, this kind of turns the whole dermatology field on its heels a little bit. I mean, the, yeah. the advice has been traditionally, stat of the sun, it causes cancer. 
I mean, and just just the small amount of what you've discussed so far today, I mean, there's just tremendous impact and benefit uh, on on having that sunlight exposure. Now, can you talk a little bit about dosing? Like if you're going to use because my experience was with red light was I get a lot of sun. So when I when I bought a red light and just started playing around with them, I didn't really notice much of a change to your credit of what you just said. Uh, but in the winter months, I do feel uh, a difference. So in the exactly. in the summer months, I, I I get plenty of sun, but in the winter months, it's very helpful. What, yeah. what kind of dosing do you recommend in sunshine? I mean, I know there's skin tone differences, and and you know, unique people have different needs. But I, on average, what would you say a person one in terms of quantity, two in terms of timing? Is there a timing um, like approach to when the light should be obtained versus not? Yeah. Uh, in order to not get off track, I want to answer your question first, but I also want to circle back to what you said about the, the dermatology and skin cancer. Um, okay, so dosing, it's, it's both, it, it can be very complex or it can be very simple. So um, the complex aspect of it has to do with each light can be very different power. Okay, and, and there's different sizes of light and there's different treatment areas so are we trying to treat a large area of our body or a very small area like an injury right here a wound here um, or a broken bone right on the fracture uh, or are we trying to do general skin anti-aging and, infl and systemic in inflammation reduction um, are we tra trying to treat large muscle groups after training um, and, and maybe this is, we should probably get into some of the practical benefits of it, but um, to answer your question briefly and sort of simplify all the complexity so we don't get too bogged down in all these details, basically get a reputable light of a reasonable size, um, not a tiny one, you don't need to get three giant panels that cover your whole wall, okay, but somewhere between maybe a third of your body size to the full length of your body. And from there, in general, you'll you'll use it somewhere between three minutes to 20 minutes per session, assuming again, it's from a reputable brand. There are a number of good brands uh, out there now. Um, I will mention I I'm actually the only person in, in the world um, who has access to this data as of this moment in time. I'm gonna publish it in the updated version of my book soon. But um, I've asked dozens of companies that are producing these lights to send their lights to a third party laboratory, one of the few in the world, um, a lab in Allentown, Pennsylvania called Light Lab International, where um, those, those lights have now been tested by a third party laboratory to get the actual true measurements of their light output. Uh, and what I can tell you is there's a huge amount of lying in the industry, first of all, <laughs> tons and tons of companies are massively misrepresenting uh, the, the light output of their devices. Some of it's lying, some of it's actually just that they're using bad measurement devices and getting very inaccurate numbers. Uh, and then s some of it's lying because other people, other companies are lying. So then they feel they have to lie too. And so it creates a sort of a landscape where everybody's now not telling the truth and only some of them even are aware of it. Um, but what I can tell you from that testing is most devices are in a good range. There are some on the market, cheap ones that are way underpowered. So don't just buy anything that you find on Amazon because it's very likely that it's not going to be in the in the proper power density to actually get benefits from. And a couple devices on the market, I actually have some concern with that might be too powerful. Um, but in general, I would say most of the big name brands have devices that are in in a in a good range. And in general, you use it depending on what you're using it for, somewhere between three minutes, five minutes, and and twenty minutes. On the upper end okay and the general principle of how you decide is are you treating something that's superficial meaning skin level or something that's very deep like injuries to tendons or bones 
um, or you know, using it on muscles uh, before or after working out, um, which is one of my favorite uses personally. So if, if you're using it for something that's uh, also, I should mention, through the skull into the brain, there's also applications there. And essentially the principle is that the deeper you're trying to reach in the body, the longer your application time and the closer the light should be to your body. Okay. The more superficial you're trying to treat, the more that the light should be moved away from your body, generally speaking, if you're using one of these LED panels, and the, the smaller time that you should use. Okay, And the, the primary reason why is um, most of these light photons get absorbed in the, in the outer layers of the skin. Okay, So if you're trying to reach, um, or I should say they get absorbed in the first, let's say, centimeter of depth. And then a smaller portion reaches the next centimeter, a smaller portion reaches the next centimeter, and so on. So if you're trying to treat deep tissues, you have to do a longer application time to deliver more of a dose of photons to those deeper tissues. Okay, whereas the superficial tissues are getting lots and lots of, they're essentially getting most of those photons. So they're getting a much larger do dose in a shorter period of time. Um, so yeah, those, those, are the, those are the general principles. Uh, if I can add maybe one nuance, if you wanna treat deeper tissues, uh, that's where near infrared as opposed to red is gonna have a somewhat of an advantage because it penetrates more deeply. So without getting too bogged down in more details, that's sort of the overview of dosing. 